James is into the stream. Bada bing, bada boom. That's it. We're live. It's the Senior Women's Championship Final. Team Foster, skipped by Diane Foster. Team Strifle, skipped by Tracy Strifle. My name is Rory McCosker with Curling Stadium. I am joined by Sam Wills. My fellow curling mate, we play on Thursdays together. Sam's done a few things in curling. He's won the uh, mixed doubles provincial twice. That's something. I mean, nothing to sneeze at, Sam. You sound like an okay curler. That's really good for me, to be honest, Rory. <laughs> and we uh, just came off a red hot semifinal this morning. And uh, the other game, Sam, uh, extra end win for Team Strifle. They scored four in the seventh end to go up three. They gave up three in the eighth end to tie tie it up. And then a really messy, long uh, extra end. They ended up getting her done. That was against that was against um, Deanna Doig, Auntie Nancy, Auntie Kathy. So sorry. Nice try. Better luck next time. Yeah, that uh, that's you know it's. It, crazy games, three balls can come out of nowhere. This, uh, this five rock rule, no tick rule. It, uh, we've seen lots of rocks in play today, and I'm sure we'll see lots again in this final here. Um, I'm looking forward to this battle. First rock goes in the rings. Second rock is a hit. So I wonder if we will see any kind of delayed guard action here or whether we're going to have a classic championship final first end bang them out. Looks like we're getting the first end blank coming here. We got another hit called, so the free guard zone is going to go pretty quick, I'd say. Um, that's uh, 
Yeah, that's that's to be expected. I mean, first rock ended up in the back of the house, so it's different. Sometimes if that rock ends up in a different spot, they you know people will guard, but it was in kind of close to the center line and decided to hit. But we got a flash here, so Tracy Strifel looking to lie two right away. Yeah, it didn't quite get her weight there. It looked like that was just kind of down and soft the whole way. Yeah, as uh, as we watch her lots, lots of rocks this weekend, it's curling tons. Uh, I don't think soft is the way you want to throw it. Um, not on hits anyways on this ice. And the ice surface looks fantastic, but, you know, you, you just got lots of swings. So you got to make sure you throw it through the broom. That's a good shot there by Team Strifle, but they left it a little high in the house. This will allow Diane to make a hit and roll across. Um, might even get frozen or get the second second red out, so see what happens here. Not quite good enough for Shot Rock, but... The whole objective would be to group those stones together. You might have a crack at a double at some point. Team Strifle, obviously, the opposite objective. Keep those things as separated as possible. Yeah, it's going to be hard with how high that top one is. I wouldn't be surprised if you see uh, Team Foster make a good hit and roll here at some point. Hung on to the side of the 12 foot. It's going to be line two. Just trying to get my cameras set up. We're on a new sheet for the first time. I made a few mistakey poos in my pregame setup that I'm just trying to clean up now. But hey, the audience can see the puck coming down the ice, so I think everything's all right for now. Gets that chip. Looks like they're going to roll clean out. Yeah, it'll be some open rings for Team Strifle. Still building away at this uh, open deuce in the first end. Yeah, I think uh, Strifle's going to be a little more careful to where they put this. They don't want to leave. Uh, they don't want to leave Diane Foster's team too many times. Do too many tries of that hit and roll. They want to try and get this as even as possible at the back of the back of the house there. Sure. Yeah. Still really good at keeping a lot of separation there. That's a long roll. All right, I have decided that I am ready to start counting rocks, Sam. I'm ready to start counting rocks, help our audience understand where we're at in this end. What do we got down the sheets? This is number four. Oh, we've got a few down there now. We're on third stones. That was Dondalee's second? First? <laughs> Get a nice close-up view. All right, yeah. Yeah, we're on third stones. This is Ken Snookirk's first rock. First so. one. Yeah, very good. Thanks, buddy. Counting. I, I can only count so far. I almost started uh, started doing some Sesame Street counting there, but <laughs> oh, and it is going to be a rollout. Oh, so, looks like open deuce in jeopardy. Yeah, I think we're going to see a blank here. Yeah, even with the pregame practice, still 
Learning a little bit about the sheet. This is my first time watching sheet B here. Although Martinsville, Martinsville is pretty consistent the whole way down the ice. And oh, another mistake. Oh, jeez. Second flash of the end for Team Foster. Not, not the start they were looking for. And uh, both teams still kind of just settling in. It's been a long few days of competition here. Things got started up on Thursday afternoon. So this is day four. Day four for the ladies. You know, Dondali missed a few hits in, in the game earlier against uh, against Sherry Anderson's team, and, and they were fortunate that Sherry's team just didn't quite capitalize. But, um, yeah, that's that's a few today that we've seen from Dondali that just aren't aren't quite characteristic of her um, and the way she normally throws. So we'll see if that continues this game. Yeah, just, uh, you know, at this point in the weekend, battling a few kind of sore soreness, you know, um, you know the, the managing the body throughout these competitions, right? That's... That's always a big part of it. I should mention, uh, Team Foster has taken the rocks, the stones from sheet three, and Strifle has taken the stones from sheet two. So they did have their own selection of rocks this uh, this game. We are on sheet two, so yeah, I'll zoom out a little look at the Martinsville Curling Club here. Fantastic rink to play, and the ice in Martinsville is always good. James Gordon does such a fantastic job there. He's always got curl. The speed's always great, so they got great ice for a provincial championship this week. Yep, couldn't agree more. First of the skip stones here in the first end. Roll. Roll. Roll it. Fire. Fire. She can't make a, a roll. That's pretty good. Groups the stones together. She might have a crack at a double on her next one. Yeah, that uh, that's a nice shot. Like he's getting it closer together. She's she's starting to get them grouped. You're gonna make Tracy have to make a good roll here now. Tracy Strifo with her first. Nice little hit and flop. That's going to be a tough double. Yeah, that's a really good shot from Tracy Strifo there. She rolled away far enough. I don't know if that double is quite makeable. Both teams seem pretty content here, just keeping it easy. Nice open uh, first end. Oh, what does Diana have coming on here? Oh, makes contact. Almost. Oh. Almost gets it moving. Needed a pinch more weight. That was a very, very good effort from Diane Foster. Well, Diane gave up a deuce in the first and last game, Rory, and she seemed to battle back just fine. So, That's true. She gave up a deuce and then did not allow uh, Sherry Anderson's team to score for an hour and 15 minutes. Is that, that how long it was? It was five ends of, of uh, only one team scoring. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Last rock here in the first end. It's an open hit for two. In the back of the rings. Looks 
looks pretty good. Sweeper's leaning on this one, keeping it straight. That is curling. What do we got That's here? Deuce. It's an opening deuce for Team Strifle. They're going to take a two-point lead into the second end. Team Diane Foster will have a chance to answer with Hammer when we return. Here is what cowboy dreams are made of. Strong, calloused hands, open skies, the smell of leather and horses and sagebrush. It's getting off the road to explore, a chance to have a real Western experience. Hats, boots, and hard work. It's finding peace while connecting to the land and with those on the same adventure. Pull up a seat or get in the saddle in our living skies and badlands, Saskatchewan. There's no doubt running any kind of farm comes with day-to-day -day challenges. We built a new facility two years ago. Technology has totally revolutionized dairy farming. Fast Milk gives us the tools to provide high quality standard of milk, making sure our equipment is all well taken care of, make sure that those animals are housed and cared for appropriately. They continue to push us with their standards to make sure that it just gets better and better. When we were first looking at these e-bikes, I read the reviews. What they talked about was an e-bike grin, and I had no idea what an e-bike grin was, but the first time I powered that bike up, I had the biggest smile on my face. It was unbelievable, because unless you own one or have driven one, you really have no idea what that feeling is like. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to describe. <laughs> Here we go, second end. Two rocks in the corners, and I, I'm not going to lie to you, Sam, I don't know how they got there. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't see that either. But I do got some good information on the two skips that are playing against each other today. So let's start with Diane Foster. Uh, we had a 2008 World Senior Curling Champion. Um, she was actually playing at a Lethbridge Curling Club in Alberta um, back when she lived in Calgary. So that uh, there's some pedigree there on Diane's team. She's playing with uh, Dondalee Dice, um, Lorraine Arguin, um, as well as... How come I lost? Uh, Charlene Seldom. Um, so there is, uh, all four players on that team have, uh, their own wins and, and, uh, have played curling at a pretty high level for a long time. Then we go over to Tracy Strifle's team. Tracy represented Saskatchewan at the 2006 Scotties. Um, Candace Newkirk, she still plays on the women's tour in the province, um, with, uh, Shirley Orsted. Um, then Danette Tracy, she's played with Tracy Strifle for a long time. Very good curler from Weyburn. And the last player on their team is uh, Julie Vandenemiel. If I botched that, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, same thing. All four players on Strifle's team. Been around the game for a long time. Won a lot of things. So it's a pretty high caliber of curling here in our senior women's final. Absolutely. And I already mentioned this, but I will mention it once again. My aunt... My, both my aunts, Nancy and Kathy, playing on Deanna Doig's team. I was rooting for you, ladies. I was hoping to commentate that the final with you in it, but sometimes in curling, it's you know an extra end loss. There's not much more you can you can do. You put it all on the line, and yeah, fun to watch. They were hoping to avenge their uh, national final loss. That was with uh, Nancy Martin skipping that team. Another really, really good run. You know, it's crazy. If you look at senior curling in Saskatchewan in the past five years, both in the men's and women's side, the teams we're sending to nationals are always in the top three or four or winning the national championship. Um, we, yeah. we have a very, very strong um, senior circuit in Saskatchewan. So anyone that wins a senior provincial to this province, you know that they're competitors and they had to play well to get out of this province. Oh, absolutely. I, my junior 
days growing up, we entered this Tuesday night men's league at the Cali Curling Club in, in Regina. And my goodness, we went like three and 15 against these senior teams. Like we're in our athletic, like <laughs> we're 20 years old playing curling four nights a week. And these guys that are playing once a week are just spanking us up and down the sheet every week. Dougie Norman, I don't think I beat him once in 10 years. <laughs> so so, so I, it only speaks to exactly what you're saying, Sam. It's it's crazy how high of a caliber it is. And, and they play. They play in lots of different stuff. Donnelly Dice plays doubles. Uh, I played Diane Foster in a sp- spiel at the Cali a few weeks ago. Tracy Streifel is constantly throwing rocks to Nutana. Like, like these... These 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 athletes. Well, you got to call them athletes because they are. They're they're playing sport at a high level, and especially, um, you know, you it's fifty plus. But wow, are they are they playing good? It's 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 so incredible to watch. Uh, Bruce Corte won the Sask Tour event in at the Nutana this year. That's just a that's a men's. I thought Kelly Knapp won that event. Uh, Kelly Knapp Bruce... won won the Nutana. Bruce Corte won Martinsville. Oh yes, Bruce Cordy won Martinsville. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, still, that's a you know an SCT event. That's like one of the top five uh, men's events in, in the province. This season. Correct. Yeah. So. And that provincial final is uh, more than halfway done. The senior men's provincial final over in in Melfort, and the score is five four for Randy Bryden over Bruce Cordy, and Randy Bryden is hammer in the seventh end. Yeah, perfect example. Two two guys that have beat me more times I can count. Not that I'm saying I'm anything special. I'm just saying like these uh these senior teams are you know they're in they're in fine form. Absolutely. And from that score line, sounds like a pretty close game. So this uh, is the fourth or fifth time someone's came and look took a look at this biter on the edge of the rings. Looks in to me, but I don't really know if it matters. There's not much you can do about it either way. Should we gamble on it? I think is that's it. In? In. Is it out? I, I'm taking in. Okay, I'll take out. I'll take out for a soda pop after Thursday night curling. A non alcoholic Corona. Absolutely. Give me a sun brew. Hey, keep looking at it. No one can no one can make up their mind. No. I'd have to get the yardstick out. Really fun moment. One of the one of the funniest moments I've <laughs> seen with the with that particular measuring tool. So there's everybody knows the measuring stick that um, you know you you measure two rocks to see which ones are closer. But the the ring measurer. What's the name of that thing, Sam? The biter. The biter. The biter stick. I was working USA Nationals for mixed doubles. And let's, you know, America, curling in America, really fun. But, uh, you know, a lot of times it, their education level is quite low or they've just been introduced to the sport in the last few years. Anyways, an official comes out to measure, to use the biter stick and proceeds to place it directly on top of the rock that they were measuring to see if it was biting. They, they didn't realize that you swung it around to, to, to see if it hit the rock. Uh, the, the official placed it directly on the rock itself. America. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, they're trying. They're doing their best down there. Yeah, they're pretty good too. Oh, I see why I was screwing up the rock counts. I didn't uh, post the score from last end. Yeah, that that's amateur it. hour. Amateur hour. Diane Foster has hammer as well. Yes, and that's huge because this could be a force or a blank. And you got to make that decision. Yeah, exactly. And that's why that biter is so important, right? Well, and another interesting rule, too, is you can't put the biter stick on it until after the end now. The only time you can put the biter stick on it, bef- like, during the end, is if you're still trying to figure out whether the rock is in the free guard zone or not. And then once the free guard zone rules are over and you can hit anything, you can no longer use the biter stick. So now we're sitting with this rock at the back of the rings. Um, is it in? <laughs> Nobody is it knows. Out? Nobody knows. <laughs> that's great. Well, I, is it a pace of play thing? I wonder why that's a rule. I actually have no idea. There's a lot of things that happen out there that I have no idea why they happen. I just know they happen. 
I feel like it'd be just good for both teams to understand what they're playing for. I don't like the, the guesswork. I don't think that's necessarily a good competitive the, element. The ambiguity of it. I think... All right, let's have, let's have some fun here, Sam, just because I am controlling this camera. Let's get right up in there. What do we think? Well, my question is how accurate are James Gordon's reins? I would say he's he seems like a stickler for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too. He's pretty he's pretty on it with that stuff, so. So, if the white cloth is in, that's in. But I don't know if it is or not. I can't remember. Did I take in or out? You took well, I took in. Okay, so I'm going against you on out. Yes. But I think it's in. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to buy me a sunbrew. So Absolutely. badly. Absolutely, yeah. Well, let's see what Diane Foster thinks. Are, are we nosing it? That looks... It's tough to, tough to say. That looks like ice for a nose. I don't think you can risk it, Sam. I think if there's even a chance that it's in, you have to take your one and hope that you're getting two. Because you, you rip this and roll out and you score one anyway. That's got to feel like crap. Yeah, at least make the shot. Oh, there's a green jackets over there. Yep, that'll spice up any, uh, any final. Not that I've played with jackets on the ice ever, but... It's a pretty it's cool feeling. Yeah, I would imagine so. You know, you're sitting there, and I remember playing doubles provincial final of 2022 Aberdeen. They made this, it was like this massive tunnel of, like, curl Sask logos and green jackets all the way down the ice. And it was like... Oh, that's awesome. It was super cool. But you can't win. You cannot win a provincial final with one eye on the jacket, one eye on the ice. You got to stay focused on the game. All right. Cleaning this in for nose. She threw know, a lot of weight there. I think she was I trying to they, peel that. They were trying to peel it for sure. Yeah, the, the way that they were sweeping it. Oh, All right. Lee called for a biter. Let's see. Now that now that they now that they rolled now that they kept their shooter in the rings, they're calling for the biter stick. Maybe she just boots it if <laughs> if they successfully roll it out. <laughs> that would be great. Some opening controversy. Who do we got here? The biter stick. Is this Bobby Boy? Bobby Boy Sonder? Well, I am not seeing. Well, that looks like of any seen, kind. Maybe. Look, she's. Is she looking at the camera? <laughs> if she's having fun with us, I really like that. Yeah. Oh, the crowd gathers. Dudley, you're in the way. <laughs> <laughs> she's too busy having fun with the cam. It is out. Out. That rock oh, is not in. Technically a force of one. Yeah, that's some weird math, but that's how it shakes down. It is one point for Team Foster, so they will trail without hammer going into the third. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Ice tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. Handcrafted in Canada, Hardline's Ice Pad has revolutionized curling for over a decade. Engineered with top-tier precision and durability, it is backed by an unmatched 10-year warranty. Designed for curlers at all levels to sweep effortlessly with maximum efficiency, it is trusted by the world's best curlers, including Olympic and world champions. It is quite simply the best brew in the game. Hardline, join the revolution. This isn't just a beer. This is a double-aged, never backed down full of heart Western beer. This is a beer brewed by 16 guys who risked it all. Original 16. Underdogs since 1989. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Wetterlands. 
Choose your new Neon Mixed Doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also, actual Letter Lamps. Use discount code WO for 15% off. Only at letterlamps.com. At PharmaSave, we see you and we care for prescriptions for common conditions, expert health advice, or support for life's little mishaps. Come talk to your PharmaSave pharmacist. Live well with PharmaSave. We are back in Martinsville. It is a one-point lead with the hammer for Team Strifel in this provincial senior women's championship match. I am Rory McCusker here with Sam Wills. And, uh, you know, a fairly open game so far, but now we got our center guard and, and two rocks drawn in around. So might get a little more action this end there, Sammy. Yeah, let's get some rocks in play here. Let's uh, let's try and figure out some angles that Rory and I uh, can't actually see. Yes. I, I'm itching for the chance to disagree with Sam for the first time. You did last end, and you owe me a sunbrew now. That's right. That's right. Speaking of brew, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. I don't have a Guinness in my fridge, but this uh, Dragon's Breath Stout from Paddockwood Brewing will have to do. I was in Ireland in October with my lovely girlfriend, Rochelle, and can confirm they are very proud of their black black gold Guinness drink. You're Won't making shut me up the right now. <laughs> they actually, Guinness does make a 0, 0.0, Sam. That was actually when we were at the factory, that was their big bragging yeah, I'm gonna uh, have to, point. I'm going to have to try that. For those of you on the stream who can't tell, I am sober. <laughs> it was tough to tell. And look, um, we have a tick rule violation. We do. So that's going back on the center heading. line here. That's the uh, first one we've seen of those today. Yeah, How can you tell an shooter. Irishman is having a good time, Rory? Um, how? He's doubling over with laughter. <laughs> Dad uh, jokes. Dublin. He's doubling over with laughter. There you go. Get the accent in there. Yeah, we would ask people in Dublin, hey, what is there to do? And they would, like, not even hesitate. There's, they, they would just say, drink. Mm -hmm. What is there to do in Dublin? Uh, drink. Okay. Yeah, drink and watch a comedy show. Drink and, uh, you know, listen to a live band. But it's, it, it, drinking was a very definite part of every kind of drinking. Go to the museum. Go to the museum about drinking. Very beautiful country. Evergreen. Incredible uh, countryside, lots of fantastic um, food and and um, experiences, sights to see. I would recommend an, a trip to Ireland for anyone thinking about it. Pretty cheap flights too, when you compare to the rest of Europe. Street Tracy Strifel is going to start removing uh, guards. I think here she's uh, up one with hammer. Doesn't like the way it looks. No, I wouldn't either. You got three blue stones right along the center line. Unless you think you got something cooking underneath those, it's time to move one, maybe two. No, just one and ooh. Oh, touches. Ooh, worst case Ontario. Yeah, terrible luck. They chip their own out, and the worst of all, I think, Sam, is the shooter stays right down the middle. Yeah, that's what you call a center line guard. That Diane Foster is now going to try and just absolutely melt one around here. And... Big sweep. See how far they can drag this. This is looking really good, Sam. That is money. That's about where I would have placed it if I could drop a stone anywhere. Yeah, I don't know if you could walk that down and place it there any better, or so that's that's pretty good. Nice, great shot by Lorraine arguing there. Heel attempt number two. That's a strong slide. This rock is humming. A little speed drift there. 
It's just the price you pay for a nice hard kick. Just gonna get one rock moving. Got two. two moving. That's a pretty yeah. good shot. Absolutely. Yep. That's gonna move two rocks off the center line. Rolls her shooter a little bit as well. I th think that's about as good as he could have done. Besides, completely removing the blue guard. Mm -hmm. No nope. senior women's curling double peel. That's that's a great shot. Yeah, props to Danette Tracy on that one. Into third stones we go. Still a good looking scenario for Team Foster. Sweepers are really giving her on this one. Got to get as much movement as he can out of this. I'll show you from the thrower's perspective. Really needs to curl in order to protect anything. They are going to get it over the hog line, but it uh, doesn't quite get to where it needs to be. All of a sudden, that red stone in the back may become a factor. As we were talking about this in the game earlier, it, it really is difficult to, uh, on ice that moves this much, you know, Making those guards perfect and getting getting rocks perfectly buried under underneath uh, underneath the guard can be tough because if, if you don't get the guard perfectly in front of it, you know it's there's so much swing that you can access rocks and it's the same thing. You know if you if you're going to throw the guard and and you're expecting swing but you throw a little a little less weight and all of a sudden you don't get as long of a finish or different stuff. You know you can end up in this situation. Um, so it is it is making those perfect guards with perfect draws. Um, can be sometimes a little tougher on swinging ice like this. Kind of gets worse to both worlds there. Sort of unlucky with how that all shook down. Um, makes contact with both blues. Does jam on her own red. And then uh, kind of rolls open. I feel like you, she just didn't quite... Even, didn't get the shooter where it needed to go and also didn't save the back red. Well, she actually hit it on the wrong side. I think she was trying to hit it on the other side, um, but and just kind of stuff it and yeah. lay in front. Yeah. Yeah. So a little unlucky. Yeah, Diane's gonna make try and make a hit and roll here. Yeah, her, and you know what? Uh, Foster's initial call was a, a tight guard. I was really confused by that. Maybe not confused, but I was a, a little surprised. But they ended up uh, going with the hit and roll, which I think is, is probably the right call. This has really got to move, though. Yeah, it's got to get over there again. I think got to jam. Ooh. Not the objective. That's going to really open the door for Team Strifle to cook something up here. That's that's pretty big swing, that shot there. Looks like uh, Tracy Strifle's rock stage shot as well. This is going to allow her team to draw. Um, they have a few different options to draw, too. Oh, now she's thinking about hitting. want to say hello to our 93 concurrent viewers on Curl Sask YouTube right now. Hello and welcome. 95, yeah, let's get that up to 100. 150 is the new goal, Sam. Everyone has to tell two friends that they're watching this game and send the YouTube link. That's the rule. You can ask us anything. Put it in the comments. Yeah. We'll answer. Yeah. Uh, join join the conversation in the chat, the YouTube chat. Sam and I would love to read your comments. Or let us know where you're watching from. Yeah. For those of you who haven't muted us yet. Definitely let us know where you're tuning in from. And let us know how much you appreciate Curl Sask uh, hosting these these online, so you can watch from wherever wherever's comfortable for you. Bit of a jam there, Sam, but the shooter ends up in a really really good spot. Yeah, it it does and it doesn't. The slash on the outside blue is so short; you can hit it anywhere on the high side, and and you know you you sit too. Hi, uh, what's that's, I want to agree with you, Sam, but we've we've seen some struggles in the hit department this game so far. Like they they just seem to be yeah. confused by how much they're moving. Yeah, it's well, it's it's. I think it's a consistency of of you know you got to make sure you throw it through the broom and true, um, because once you throw it soft, it's gone. So we're just focused on trying to throw it through the broom and true. And I think, I think you know, 
you're going to see these teams pick up on that a little bit more as the game goes on. Um, Diane's hitting was quite good in the past game that she played. We we were on that stream, so um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if you see her make this pretty well. Well, it's a big statement shot here. To lie to one undercover with a big slash hit here. Sweeping nice. it early. Yeah, nice outward momentum to the broom, just like you were saying. Let's watch it from the overhead. Perfect. This looks pretty good, Sam. Ho oh, ho. Right on the money. Sitting two in the rings, one of them behind cover. It's a nice shot. Good defensive curling shot. Defensive and offensive at the same time. As defensive as you're getting rid of a red, but she's also that that rock she ran into the red is sitting buried in the top of the eight foot. It is sitting buried. However, there, there's room behind this corner guard, a lot of room to get shot rock. Yeah, I else. think with how much it's curling, that corner guard is so high that even if you do get shot rock, I think they'll be able to they'll be able to access the rock after. Um, I would almost be tempted on drawing wide around the red and the other blue. Um, the blue that she just ran in, draw in there, try and get, you know, kind of on the T-line there around everything. I think it'd be harder to get at, get at it if you went that way. And you know what, Sam? Just like clockwork, they read your mind. They got the broadcast on. Oh, she almost changed the room. You could see they were thinking about that wide out turn, but she's got the broom back in, in a, a spot. It looks like they're going to go through the, the hole here. Yeah, they they're still gonna play the draw that we just talked about, but they're they're gonna take it across center line. Maybe they see more finish here, um, and if they do, they can still make this shot. I don't think there's enough room to get through, Sam. We got Laurie Schwangler commenting on the on the page, uh, watching from Tisdale. Kendra Volk watching from Fox Valley. Hello to hey. you guys. Hello, thanks for chiming in on the chat. Hey, the line looks pretty good, Sam. They're by the top one, but now this is just going to dive over. See, I just don't think that line was there. Yeah, with that high blue guard, it's tough to get through there. Yeah. Yeah, a little confused by that one. I thought she threw that about as good as she, she needed to. Maybe a little light, Sam, but no, I, just, I just don't see a world where that was getting through. Uh, I think you got a... In you throw it absolutely perfect. You paper the top blue. You paper the, the sorry. You paper the blue over the hog line. You paper the blue in the top of the house. You probably can make it, but it's like, I'm talking millimeters, right? Yeah. Yeah. If the objective was to get shot rock, I think there was a lot of easier ways to do that for sure. We got a penny chance watching from Coldstream, British Columbia, super friendly of Diane Foster. She says, go, Diane, go. So we got... Go, Diane, go. Yeah, this is good. We're interprovincial now. That's great. Thank you, Penny. Yeah, Lori grew up living next to Donda Lee in Fox Valley. Oh, that's fantastic. Last shot here. Team Foster in the third end. Do you think Lori has answers on why Donda Lee is the littlest lady ever, but her two sons are the tallest, massive men they are? <laughs> they are big boys, yeah. And that's just a fine spot. Lying three, I believe. And not wanting to try that draw again, Tracy's looking at a hit and roll off this back. This is kind of a scary shot, Sam. You, you don't want to roll out here. Yeah, you know, I, I think Tracy's playing the right shot here. I think this is the easiest way for her to get in there. Um, the only other shot I kind of see is maybe a little hack waiter off the center line past that, uh, that blue guard. But this one is a little more natural. You know, you, you throw a nice control weight. You know, you hit two-thirds, half a rock, roll in. You catch a four-foot for shot, that's great. But if not, limiting them to steal a one is really good in this situation right now. 
definitely feels like a damage control call here from Tracy Strifle. Yeah, she's up one with the hammer, right? It's it's don't don't give the game away when you're up one with the hammer. You have control over this, and this looks like a really good shot coming down. Oh, Little roll looks in. Really nice. What a fantastic curling shot by by Tracy, uh, Tracy Strifle. Strifle. Yeah. Fantastic. She only had a few feet of room to, to catch that shot stone, and she gets it. So that'll be a single point in the third end. It'll be a 3-1 lead for Team Strifle. Team Foster will have the hammer in the fourth. Sastel Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Hi, I'm Shannon and we're here at the brand new Bike Tricks Electric Bike Showroom in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. It's grand opening, so we're gonna head inside and talk to some Bike Tricks customers. Let's go. I chose Bike Tricks because of the reputation. I know people who have Bike Tricks bikes and I know that it's a local company, which I like to support local. They're great bikes. Come down and see the team here. They're really a great team of people. Check out the bikes, go for a ride. We are back, back in Martinsville. Scoreboard has not been updated. So that would feel weird if I gave you a score update without it showing the fourth end. 3-1, Strifle over Foster. I feel like I should show the house. First things first here. Kind of setup we got going on. It is center guard for Team Strifle. I think they came up light. I think they were trying to put one in the rings. It was a draw around for Team Foster. This is a really good looking tap back. Beautiful shot. Pumps it back, but it stays in the ring. So those ones are always dangerous, Sam. They're, it's far enough away from the forefoot that it's not really acting as good backing, but and it's kind of out of the way for now enough that you might be tempted to forget about it. But that rock very well could come into play later this end. We just had a comment on the on the YouTube page here that there's a team that just dropped out of the mixed provincials in Kinsley next weekend and they would like to fill that spot. I don't know if registration is still open. I will be playing in that next weekend um, with my team, but uh, Swanee is the one that commented that, so um, contact Curl Sask, I guess, to see what that's all about if you're interested. Yeah, I've we heard got some... We got Lynn Brady watching from Mexico. Oh, that fills me with green, jealous rage. Yeah, I'm sure St. Paddy's Day is a lot more fun down there right now. St. Pablo's Day. Oh, almost had a little wipe out there. I have Indeed. seen Sherry Anderson throw one from her from belly on the floor so far this uh, this tournament, so it wouldn't be the first time. Ain't nothing wrong with a little speed wall. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, she almost made it. Just barely missed that run back. She could throw some heat. That's no, that's no Nancy Inglis uh, senior women's heat. Let's let's just make sure we're we're not confusing anything like that. But that was that was a pretty good pretty good speed on that run back. 
Seniors curling, it's always a weapon if you can have someone that can that really has a, a gun. All right, Lorena arguing with uh, Diane Foster's team. Drawn to lie three right now. Yeah, and we saw this morning in the semifinal, Sam, it took them a few ends to get going, but once Foster's team really got a feel for the draw weight, they just did not stop. It was... Uh, it was really consistent shot making throughout the the middle and, and last ends of the game. Uh, really coming to mind, Sam, was that uh, that draw to the lid in the seventh end against two. It looked like a sure steal, and then out of nowhere, Diane Foster just pins one. That might be one of the best clutch draws I've watched all year, and that's including watching the Scotties, watching like that draw Diane made in in seven in the semifinal was fantastic. And thinking of their opponent as well, Sam, like you're, you're letting Sherry Anderson get back in the game. They would have if you uh, miss it, yeah. yeah, scored four points. And so if she missed this, that draw, it gave up four points and two ends to give up a tie game scenario. That's that's a coin yeah. flip. That's a coin flip at that point. So that was a game winning shot, game winning draw. So Foster's team, they're down right now, but they they know what they have to do, and they're right now they're making the shots to get themselves back in this. So I think we got a exciting. Fourth end brewing here, Sam. We do. Just an update on my St. Paddy's Day drink here. It sucks. It's terrible. Should it, be a Guinness. It was called Dragon's Breath, you said, right? Yeah, I don't know. Anything called Dragon's Breath is going to be that good. Yeah, that's that was that was a bold strategy just to even open that thing. <laughs> But here we are. Lorraine arguing, making another really good draw here. The come around the corner guard. Yeah, that is uh, nearly perfect. I guess if you're to com if you're gonna complain anything about it, it, might be like a few inches deep. But you know, up up two points, Strifel's not gonna be playing a freeze or anything. I think they gotta hit the open one. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what she's doing. My rock behind you. I have really struggled with this rock counter. Harder than it looks. Yeah, multitasking is hard today. I uh, if anyone else is is watching curling like I am right now, where I got curling on my laptop and then I got the players' championship on my TV in the background for the golf. Let me know who you think's going to win coming down the stretch in the Players' Championship because it's close. That's got a good amount of rotation. Should hold it pretty true. Oh, look at this hit and roll. Gets one, a lot of spring on that rock, and that's gonna work just fine. This is turning into a pretty scary end for Team Strifle. Absolutely. Two rocks buried, one rock open, and uh, one very lonely red in the rings right now. This is not a situation where you wanna roll your shooter out. Gotta keep your shooter in the eight foot here. Big shot coming down the ice. Sweeping hard for curl here right now. Looks okay. Yeah, there's no easy double there. That's a nice shot. It's gonna kind of put off the uh, the scary situation for a little while longer. Red line two for now. I just got a text from uh, from Aaron Shutra. He said he's tuned in. The 2024 club champions. Uh, they uh, Rory said that they beat you in the semi, but uh, he said they're all tuned in watching to see another provincial champion crowned. I uh, I wonder who Shooter lost. They only had one loss that competition. I wonder who that was to. Was it to you? 
Oh, now that you remind me, yeah, I just remembered that it was to me. Yeah, we did beat Shooter in that uh, in that competition. Eh, it's a shame. Shame we wouldn't have seen what would have happened in the final. We did lose the semifinal of that club championship. With the boys, T-Rob, Mosey, and David Haynes out of retirement. I also got Ryan Dice texting me right now, too. So that would be Don DeLee's son. He had some words about a shot uh, Don DeLee threw earlier in the game. I'll let them talk about it after. <laughs> he was not happy with her form? No comment. <laughs> yeah, I was fortunate enough to, to play an event with Ryan earlier this year. He came and subbed with my men's team in, in Yorkton and the Players' Championship there because we were missing a guy. And it... Uh, Never, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with uh, with any of the dices on the ice. It's always always a pleasure to play with or against them. They're they're a great curling family. Yeah, absolutely. I had a really fun game against uh, Ryan Dice in the, at the Tanker, and I think it was 2019. They jumped out to a five point lead on us, and at the fifth end break, we finally got our crap together. We stole four ends in a row to actually make an interesting tenth end. But he made a nice draw against two to win the game. But it's still, it was a very interesting comeback. Just steal of one, steal of one, steal of one. <laughs> All right, well, that's a good, great shot by Team Strifle here. But there is a double to lie four. Yeah, that was a bold call. I mean, th there was always going to be some kind of angle to remove at least one, maybe two reds. I don't know what else she would have done, though, Sam. Yeah, like like Lorraine arguing started, she she started this with that great draw she made, and the Dondalee made a couple nice hits back. Tracy's team continued to put pressure on, but Diane's team, they've they've made all their shots coming in the stretch here. So, you know, when, when you get pressure on you like that, sometimes you got to make these draws to try and get out of it and try and hope for a half shot. But Diane makes a good one here. Tracy might be in trouble this end. This is a huge shot. Biggest shot of the game so far. Diane Foster. Trying to curl this one back. Got to touch something here, Sam. Pick the They're top one. Okay. That's still not worst case. That's still not terrible. Tracy's going to try and freeze again. You know, geez, Sam, would you ever, would you ever leave this one kind of top four-ish, top eight-ish, just sort of concede the shot for two uh, to avoid giving that same double for four again? Well, you know, that's... Even even if you're top four, you can still make the double. Yep. Right. I, I think the only the, or the best way of doing this would would actually to be try and if you're freezing, make sure you're freezing the half that's on the side that the that the rest of the rocks are on. So then, if you do go to make a play on it to get it out, it jams on that back blue in the back of the rings. Sure. Yeah. That would probably be the best case. So you definitely want this freeze to cross the center line. Yeah, you, you want it to be on the right-hand side of the sheet from where we're sitting. And it looks pretty close to that right now, actually. We'll you got to curl it. Overhead here. You got to curl it. Uh, I, th I believe they've left the same shot. Oh, they just got it to nose. I don't think it's for four anymore, Sam, but if you you hit it pretty hard half a rock, I think you're getting three. Yeah, I think I think you, you can even hit a third. I think it's just a third. It's It's... it's yeah, except, I, except that your shooter's not going to score. I would exactly. Say. Yeah, I don't think half a rock may not squeeze that that red one out of the eight foot enough. So, you you know you want to make sure you get that top red one completely out of the eight foot. That's how you score this set. Right? Pretty happy, happy, lively houses in Martinsville. The rocks like to bounce as well, so that that'll help them. A lot of action on the stones. Big shot. Final stone in this fourth end. Looking to score a pile. It's Team Foster. This is a tighter line for sure. Rock is curling a little earlier than the previous thrown stone. Are the sweepers able to hold it? 
Humps the red, rolls it to the side. I think that's going to be good for three, Sam. Little Vic Router, count them up. One, two, three. Diane Foster, what a great shot. Absolutely, and we were wrong. You could you could hit that way thicker than I thought. That was definitely yeah, that, for Yeah, that sprung out of there quite well. So. In the words of Nicole Longfee. That was a nice shot. <laughs> Absolutely. Gem of a curling fan, Nicole Longfee. Okay, that's the fourth end break. We've got a, a barn burner here, folks. It's a 4-3 lead for Foster. Tracy Strifel will have the hammer. Everybody get a drink. At PharmaSave, we see you and we care for prescriptions for common conditions, expert health advice, or support for life's little mishaps. Come talk to your PharmaSave pharmacist. Live well with PharmaSave. This right here is time well spent. Why not pour yourself a smooth Saskatchewan made original 16? Warm up to the opportunity to seize the day. New at Asham, take your game to the next level with the Gushu Ultra Light. Equipped with our world famous rotator disc system that attaches by Velcro, quickly and easily upgrade and replace your sliding platform. Check out our website at asham.com. Here is what cowboy dreams are made of. Strong, calloused hands, open skies, the smell of leather and horses and sagebrush. It's getting off the road to explore, a chance to have a real Western experience. Hats, boots, and hard work. It's finding peace while connecting to the land and with those on the same adventure. Pull up a seat or get in the saddle in our living skies and badlands. Saskatchewan. This isn't just a beer. This is a double-aged, never backed down full of heart Western beer. This is a beer brewed by 16 guys who risked it all. Original 16. Underdogs since 1989. We are back. Players taking a much needed break. Rehydrating. It's been a long four days. Not that the uh, the draw schedule has been that tight or anything, but just to be playing curling for four days, it's it gets tiring. It's mentally exhausting. You know, thinking of. I know. I know when I'm when I'm playing these tournaments, I'm thinking about work the next day on Monday. I'm I'm thinking about all the chores that I didn't do that weekend. It's just tough to tough to stay locked in. Sometimes. Locked and loaded. I mean, although my my, my dad told me that like, cash spiel days sort of back in the day sort of thing. Finals were played on Monday. You'd play through the weekend, and certain teams would qualify for for Monday. So you'd have to take that day off work anyway. Or everyone would call in sick. <laughs> yeah, that's... I've called in sick after winning on a Sunday. But that was because we won and partied. <laughs> I've, uh, I don't think I've ever played on a Monday before. No, no, definitely in my, in my playing career that hasn't been the case. Your mom and dad's for sure. Brian and Joan, absolutely, they would. Uh... Oh yeah. I was trying to. I was actually having. I had uh, had a chat with your mom, Rory. Um. At the when we were watching clubs or when you were playing, I said, Joan, why don't you go play seniors? Like, get uh, get the band back together. And she was like, <laughs> Oh, that's that's a good idea. Maybe we should. But I don't. Did know she really? Going. She did. She uh, also she also was about to board a flight to the Scotties and was getting uh, ready for the flight. If you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, getting her uh, taking her pre-flight 
Yeah, her rocket fuel or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting she would say that because she has told me she has absolutely no desire to play seniors. And you know what? I kind of respect it. I feel like Joan has won enough stuff. She should maybe let someone else have uh, have some fun for a little while. It's just It just makes me mad because she's still good. Yeah, so Jan, Marcy, and Joan play on Monday nights at uh, the Highland. They have a good time. They play with uh, Dawn. Uh... Oh, she'll kill me, but I'm forgetting her last name. But they have a good time on Monday nights. She can still chuck those eight-second hits. There's no such thing as control weight in Joan's world. Everything is high and hard. All right, and now Team Foster, who was kind of clawing their way back into this game, find themselves with a lead here in the fifth. It's Team Strifle with Hammer, just like we started this game with. Yeah, you're going to see Tracy's team throw a couple corner guards here this end, I think, or at least one. Um, they're going to try and manufacture themselves a deuce again. Um, Tracy's team has played really solid. So is... Uh, so is Diane's. They've kind of been putting pressure on each other back and forth, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see quite a few rocks in play at the end of this end as well. Just want to take a moment to thank Sastel for supporting Curling, Curling Stadium in Sask. A lot of these events that we enjoy watching our friends and, and uh, family and teammates play in, it's, uh, we're, we're pretty lucky to have Sastel in this province. There's a lot of telecom providers in a lot of different places that, that do not invest in uh, homegrown kind of community events like Sastel does, so Big shout out to Sastel for supporting Curling and Curling Stadium in the province of Sask. Yeah, Sastel's big support. The uh, Sastel tanker can't thank him enough. But Karen Morrison uh, said hi here. She's watching. She said she's cheering hard for a previous Alberta senior and master teammate. So hi, Karen. Awesome. Awesome to hear, everybody. There's a lot of a lot of Diane Foster fans commenting here. Where's all my Tracy Strifle fans? You guys around? Yeah. Tracy, Tracy's from Saskatoon, so they might be actually in the building. But. Strifle sisters, got to hear from you. Tracy and I had a lot of fun at the Grand Slam in Saskatoon. This is in uh, 2020 or 2019. I think it was pre-COVID. Maybe 21. I, don't, I clearly don't know. But not this last slam that was just this in this season, but at the Merlis Belcher place. She was a stats volunteer. And she took her job very seriously. So seriously, in fact, she told me that she lost sleep one night because she couldn't decide what to grade a Brad Gushu shot. <laughs> she came to the stats bench the next day and she said, I've been thinking about it all night. I can't decide whether that was a three or a four. <laughs> and, of course, I really appreciated her taking the job so seriously. But also, yeah. you're a volunteer. You're a volunteer, Tracy. Don't beat yourself up. That's, you know, it's, and that's, that's, that's something that people should talk about too. The amount of volunteers it takes, um, you know, to put on these events all year, these provincial championships, all the umpires that are out there, um, you know, our timekeepers, yeah. our people doing stats, all these different things. You know, we have a great core group of people at Curl Sass that get paid to work there, but these events do not go on without volunteers and the people that are there spending their time their weekends their days to make these events happen so shout out to those people because it's the same group all year and you guys kill it for all the events everything so thank you yeah that's not just a due diligence thing sam i it's it's completely correct these events don't happen they just don't happen they, without they don't people. Yep. they yeah, could definitely awesome. happen without us on this thing though <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is a blessing and a curse for anyone who's, who's tuned in. Now, well, Sam and I have fun watching curling. We hope you're having fun watching curling with us. And we get a little excited sometimes. Some good shot making. Now, this hangs on. And it looks spin. like it will. Wow. That's on. That's definitely that, on. That looks on to me. No biter needed this time. So that's going to be really good. That's going to take uh, two shots at least to roll back to the center line and have any hope of, of being undercover. So that's a massive positioning advantage for Team Strifle. 
It's like the center guard doesn't even exist when you have to hit it all the way out there. Sweeper's working on. Dice is running out of room next to the foam on that one, and they will hang on to it. It's a great answer. You know, people don't understand when they're watching that. When you're coming down the ice there and you're trying to make a hit on a rock that's way out there and you start running into the boards, <laughs> it is a lot harder to stay in front of the rock than you think. Like, Oh, man. You just got to call it at a certain point. Yeah. Okay. Team Strifle saying touche. They are giving up on the wing. Come right down the middle. I don't know, Sam. I, I might have traded another hit or two along the wing. I oh, I love this going. call. Yeah? Tracy Strifle's got hammers. She says, I want to score. She's ignoring the rock on the outside of the range. She says, look at me. I'm going to get one buried on the on the pin. Now, that probably came about a foot and a half, two feet too deep. She probably would have liked that to be half in the top of the four foot or full top four, but um, sure. still a fantastic shot. Right now, the focus changes for Diane Foster's team. Now there's some pressure on them. They got to make a really precise shot here. You just go hit back and forth, hit back and forth. You know, you might get forced or a blank and, you know, maybe blank's good hammer and six, but good on Tracy Strifle's team saying, no, we're going to, we're going to take it to them. We're going to put some pressure on them. Let's get that draw wrapped right around. Sure. Yep. We got Garth Anderson watching from the Foam Lake Curling Club. He says, home of Diane Foster cheering her on. Another Diane Foster fan. And Foster Gang is coming out in spades. Yeah. This is a really good looking freeze here. That's a nicely positioned stone. That blue is going nowhere. Yeah, another great shot by you know the the middle the middle four rocks this game from, you know, Lorraine Arguin and, and Donnelly Dice for Foster's team have been very, very solid the whole game. And that's same on Tracy Strifle's side, too. Like, Danette Tracy and Candace Newkirk, like, they, all four of those players, they really haven't missed much. Yeah. No, it's, it's, been, it's been really impressive, for sure. The thing I like about watching uh, curling from a curling club on the weekend or something, I, I think more clubs should put on watch parties. It seems to have kind of faded off in recent history. Your club's got a bar, your club's got a TV, probably some, some comfortable places to sit. Yeah, head on over. Engage with other curling fans and, and uh, you know, watch the big game together. I know we like watching, like, on our phones and on YouTube and on our TVs at home, but uh, I just, I like that atmosphere of being at your curling club and, and watching other high-level curling. Many a times have we went down to the Cali to watch a, a big game in the Briar or Scotties or something like that. It's It's been a fantastic time. Helps support the club it, a little bit as well. And that's the thing. It supports the club. Like, I'm, uh, for those of you that know me, I live in Lumsden, Saskatchewan. Um, I am a member of the Lumsden Curling Club, small town Sask. And, yeah, I watch a lot of curling in the curling rink. You know, you walk down and whether there's people curling or not, normally they'll have the... Have the old uh, bar open up there, five bucks a beer, sit down, watch some curling on the TV, support the rink. Happy hours here. And a buck and a half a beer. So Good time. Yeah, no kidding. Dollar draft at the pump? <laughs> oh, now you're aging me. <laughs> Diane Foster's team... That's another really good shot. Yes, that's two fantastic shots in a row. That's going to be a timeout from Team Strifle. All right. What would Rory do? Uh, he would forget to lose rocks. So I've actually just adjusted our rocks remaining here. I think that's correct now. Right? This is, um, yeah, that was Don DeLee's uh, last, last stone. What would Rory do? I, th I think you just got to tap it with back line, don't you? Right on the nose. Just accept that you, you have to, it's going to take two shots to make something happen in the forefoot here. Yeah, I think you want to tap with back line, um, even hack. I think the important part is when you tap it, you actually want to, that, that red that's 
or not that red, that, that blue, the second blue, you actually want to touch it because you want to move it just a shade sideways to change course, the yeah. angle that it is on the red rock on the pin. Yeah, actually, wouldn't it be good, Sam, to completely unlock all three? To get all three moving might be good. The, yes, um, but you don't want to lose your back red. That's the only oh, thing. Oh, you don't want to lose it, but you definitely want to get that middle blue on the other side, the, uh, yeah. the outside of the red. Like, you still have a chance of counting. Well, I mean, it's it, let's right now it's shot rock, right? But you, you still have a chance of counting that back red in your, your grand scheme, I would say. This looks like ice for a, for a hit. Yeah, like, and if you if you throw like a board or, or a control, and you hit it, you know, right on the nose, you're not going to lose that back red. You will lose that that rock you initially hit, but you will change the angles in the house there, and that's the important part because the angles right now really are not good for Tracy Strifle. So we're going to see Candace Newkirk try to shuffle this up a little bit right now, um, and kind of see what we can do with uh, with the angles. We're a little wide, so this needs to curl quite a bit. She, you see Candace crawling away from the rock, trying to will it to curl over. This is coming. Look at this go. That is exactly what she needed to do. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that middle blue didn't didn't move enough, but... The only thing now is if she ever tries to make a play on it, the blue springs out into the open. Right, so we're we're three reds to one blue. So if you're a Foster's team, I don't even think you want to touch anything right now. That'd be great. You, you want to leave this exactly how it is. Yeah. I don't know if there's a point in hitting that the open red. Well, that red could come into play at some point. Oh, of course it. I think you're all in on protecting the forefoot at this point, though. Is there an outturn pick right now, Sam, on the blue? Like, if you're if your team strifle, do you, are you keeping that outturn sort of pick shot in your back pocket? Absolutely. You know, it curls so much. You can throw, you know, a control weight hit, and if you make it by the guard by, you know, a half inch, it curls enough that you will touch that blue and pick it out. Little ice adjustment from the hack. Looked like a clean throw, lots of rotation. Really taking off, Sam. That thing's going sideways. I guess it's a little light. But it's going to do the trick. Now, this was always a, a consideration. We are getting late enough in the end, Sam, where, you know what I mean? It's, it's a draw to lie to. Yeah, you make this draw. You're in a pretty good spot. Like you're putting again, it's all about putting pressure on the other team. Tracy makes this draw, puts a lot of pressure on Diane. Diane's played really well under pressure all you know the last all day today. You see that draw she made in 17, Sherry Anderson, which we talked about before. Um, you know, she just made that shot for three in the fourth end. Um but you know, the more if you continue to make you the other team throw those um those lower percentage shots that, that are harder that that you know you don't you get a few misses out of them you will eventually see a miss and you'll see uh you'll be able to crack a deuce or a three or right yep the dreams of scoring all those rocks and the kind of eight foot and 12 foot seems to be gone for team strife well, they're gonna try to make it happen right down the middle oh is this a tap must have been so they were trying to tap. It just looks, looks like it overcurled a little bit. So no harm, no foul. It doesn't really change much. I wonder, that, did they not think that there was room to draw straight drawn to the button? Like it was, it was tight, but there's definitely room. There's definitely room. And I mean, to make that tap perfectly would have been very, very tough. That was probably good weight if she 
taps the spot on the rocks that she was trying to tap. Maybe a touch heavy, but it just seems like uh, including extra line in that shot when a straight draw would have done the trick, but that's just what I was seeing. Yeah, the crazy thing about us sitting right here is we're not <laughs> out there. Yeah, exactly. We can only speculate what we think is, is uh, going on, and unless you're the one on the ice that's playing on the ice and you know all the ice is running and what spot's doing what and you're sweeping and throwing, you're, you really don't know. So Sam, that, that outturn pick we were talking about, Neither team has really been looking at it. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Tracy take a look at it after this rock is finished. Because I'm actually not even too sure what you're guarding here. You're kind of guarding that same tap, I suppose, but this is yeah. a, a She's little tap heavy. It. That's actually, oh. it takes the tap away. It takes the tap and the draw away, I'm pretty sure. So Tracy's still looking at this, this slicing tap. I, I think there's an outturn pick there that you should be looking at. And it's for three or four. I think so, too. I think there's an outturn pick for four. But I, have, I actually haven't seen either team take any kind of serious look at it. No. What do our spectators think? Do our spectators think there's an outturn pick for, for, for a few? Or are we crazy? I mean, there's that, that red catcher in the back of the rings now that it might jam on, but I still think you take it on, Sam. This is an insanely difficult angle tap just for two. And you know what? There actually is a disaster that could that you could give up one doing this if you hit it the wrong way. I don't think I love this. It's incredibly hard to give up a steal, but it is possible. I just hit it a little too hard. Tracy Strifle, she's already counting one. That'll be good enough to tie the game. See if she can't sneak a second one in there to take a one-point lead with this final stone in the fifth end. We're curling it right now. I think she's pretty close. Oh, now we're going straight. This looks really close. Oh, Chisels just... The guard. I don't think she quite had enough weight for how thin she was going to hit that, but it is one for Tracy Strifle. It's a tie game. Tie game. Going into the sixth, all important sixth end, it'll be Team Foster with Hammer when we return. There's no doubt running any kind of farm comes with day to day challenges. We built a new facility two years ago. Technology has totally revolutionized dairy farming. Fast Milk gives us the tools to provide high quality standard of milk, making sure our equipment is all well taken care of, make sure that those animals are housed and cared for appropriately. They continue to push us with their standards to make sure that it just gets better and better. New at Asham, whether you're in the hack or kicking back, live it in style in the new Throw and Stones line exclusively by Asham. Curling is more than a sport, it's a lifestyle. Check out our website at asham.com. When you buy a lottery ticket in Saskatchewan, your money really goes a long way. More than 12,000 sport, culture, and recreation groups receive funding from Sask Lotteries every year. Everyone wins. When we were first looking at these e-bikes, I read the reviews. What they talked about was an e-bike grin and I had no idea what an e-bike grin was, but the first time I powered that bike up, I had the biggest smile on my face. It was unbelievable, because unless you own one or have driven one, you really have no idea of what that feeling is like. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to describe. Bryden, Bryden. We have just received news that Randy Bryden has won the senior men's. Congratulations, Team Bryden. Two Brydens are champions this week. Josh Bryden, Randy's son, just won the uh, University uh, National Curling Championship with the U of R. Congratulations to them. And now Randy Bryden. Papa Bryden just, uh, just won the senior men's. And I know Kathy which is Randy's mom, Josh's grandma. I know her quite well. I'm sure she's going to be the, probably, she's probably the happiest person on the planet right now. Loves watching curling. 
just got to watch two amazing things. Yeah, congrats to those boys. Good Cali curlers, both of them. Yeah, both of them play in the Thursday night paper win. Funny, uh, they're winning provincials, but they aren't winning the Thursday night paper win. No, that's our league, Sam. You gotta yeah. go. You gotta go through us. <laughs> you gotta go through us, Mosey and Lightby. That's a it's a strong team. Oh, here's a here's a good comment on the YouTube channel from uh, Tracy Mir Mur says speaking of sisters cheering for team foster in hudson bay saskatchewan hometown of diane foster patty hersicorn denise hersicorn and marcy goodright yeah it's a factory up there something's in the water yeah hudson bay i need to come figure out what's uh what's going on with curling where you guys are <laughs> the, thanks uh, tracy for that comment that's pretty cool that is pretty cool yep it's a it's a very interesting town it's it's very on its own you got to drive through some some pretty wicked forest, pretty thick, thick bush to get there. There's really no neighboring communities. It's kind of just the only thing out there. And uh, yeah, they love their sports. Got a beautiful brand new high school with a nice football field and good indoor facilities. I haven't been to the curling club, but uh, Hudson Bay is a it's, a, it's, it's a sports loving community for sure. A lot of hockey up there as well. Go sports. How's your rock counter doing this end, Rory? Uh, I was just looking at it. I think I think pretty good. I think I've gotten up to five. Er, I'm missing a red. Crap. Almost had me, Sam. Oh, now I got two extra blues. Oh, oh we got it's, a jam here. Well, it's just been jam city. Everyone's found a way to, to touch the one in the back 12. <laughs> Every shot so far this end. Yeah. Okay, we got six rocks down the ice, Sam, right? Correct? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Very good. Okay. Nothing like watching a curling game. We're tied, playing six. Like, this is this is just this is good curling, guys. It's, if you're tuned in, this is uh, this is as good as it gets. It is, and you know what? Championship finals. Like I cover a lot of curling. This is my this is my primary job now. Championship finals have a bad habit of being a real stinky game. Either a big blowout or just kind of boring in general. Not a lot of risk taking, but. Hey, tie game in the sixth. We've had some some big swings, some big shots. So, you know, score a three, a couple deuces. It's been a great, great match, just like you said. Got to get rid of this center guard now for Team Foster. They do have a biter out there. Edge of the 12 foot. So cleaning up the middle be of interest to them. Oh, no. Is this going to... Oh, they do no. manage to avoid their own. <laughs> Center guard eliminated. Depends how bad Team Strifle wants to score here in the sixth. Looks like well, it's uh, the stats have shown if you're if you're tied playing six and you score, your your odds of winning go up immensely. Um, you know that's one thing that you're seeing teams look at a lot more. We even saw on tour this year there was a team they had a chance there was an open house and they could have blanked six and took hammer to seven. They actually drew the paint. <laughs> and scored one and six. Yeah. And then then they forced the other team to one and seven. And they had Hammer coming home tied up in eight. So, you know, there there is something about the Hammer control part of the game where scoring in six can be very, very beneficial to you in an eight-end game. Um, so it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see how this end turns out. Yeah, you want to score in the sixth end. It, it doesn't really matter what situation your odds of winning are going to go up. A force isn't necessarily a great thing. Anyone curious about those analytics or the kind of schemes of, of who scores when and what that does, 
you can go to curlingzone.com and one of the tabs at the top will say analytics you just click that click that link and a big scoring matrix will will show you you know um it's got the data set from the last five or six years you can kind of custom search it and it's really educational anybody even rec curlers Anybody trying to familiarize themselves with uh, game management should take a look at that analytics page on curlingzone.com. There's actually a ton of good curling information on curlingzone.com. And if you have never been on the Curling Zone website, you get scores from absolutely every major tournament going on in the world. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we are lucky to have it to have such a great resource curling stadium of course uh wouldn't be possible without curling zone as well so thank you jerry and thank you curling zone for supporting competitive and rec curling across the world okay it's an interesting situation here rory we got we got three red ones in the back of the house here that we do and I think they're all out counting the blue biter on the edge. So if you're ever going to make a double and try to score your, your biter, I think it has to be right now. I think that's what uh, Team Foster has lined up here. So make two two reds go away. You get a pretty serious chance of scoring that, that, uh, that biter on the wing. This is curling hard and it's curling early. Oh, Sam, are they going right through the wickets here? No, no. No, it's, it's uh, actually, that's a really good shot. They got a dead nose that are also going to lose one of those back reds. They burned, oh. they, bur they burned the stone. Oh, no. Disaster. Yeah. So that, 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 you can go back in YouTube, folks, and you can watch how that went down. But I'm pretty sure that was going to overcurl everything. It may have clipped one red one in the back of the rings. Oh, I just rewatched it. It's it was yeah. That thing was so, uh, yeah. Lorraine unfortunately booted that stone. That's going to be a big swing. And no, ladies, that is not how they were set up. But that's okay. Yeah, they did not reset those stones very well. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Someone, uh, someone, go bring a YouTube uh, stream to them on the ice. Those that were not did happen at the Briar there. Oh yeah, they've come to rely on it. Just another yeah. benefit of streaming the curling games. You know what? It, so this is. I don't advise this for umpires. I don't think this is correct. But it was still quite funny at the USA uh, mixed doubles nationals. The umps came back into the broadcast room to see if someone hogged a rock. They wanted us to give them a frame by frame, like if, if someone carried a rock over the hog line for a violation. It's pretty cool. I got to feel like a like an NHL video ref or something. So even though that was a you know an unfortunate thing, the burned rock, uh, you can still score two here if you're Team Foster. It's funny. I just got a text from Ryan Dice saying uh, that's uh, Dondalee's son saying, "Well, if there's ever a burnt rock, that's the time." <laughs> there's still a chance they could score two, and and he's uh, is he ever correct on that? There is still a chance that they can score two this end. Absolutely. Looks like they're lining up a hit, though, because as we are establishing, Sam, it is important that you score one. And make sure that you score one. So the, the best way to do that would probably be getting this, this red rock out of the way. But I think if you're going to get forced to one, you may as well try to get two. I, I'd be drawing into the back pile here. If I yeah. Was yeah, you're probably right, Rory. Mark it on the calendar. I don't say that very often. Well, I'm, I'm always right whether I'm right or not. So it's, <laughs> in my book, it's, it's just win after win. <laughs> oh, 
I'll see how Rochelle feels about that statement after. <laughs> Uh, Rochelle's still sleeping off her St. Patrick's Day adventure last night. She is not in a position to be defending oh, herself Hanlins. or others. <laughs> little hit. Little roll. Okay, now that the shot's done, I don't mind it. You might have an opportunity at a double or, or you know, maybe Tracy doesn't get shot rock here and you'll have a, a hit on the back one to score two. Yeah, if I'm Tracy, I'm, I'm nosing this. Or try to roll this, hit this, and roll it towards the center line. Sure. Uh, drawing against four. Never fun. Yeah, we've watched Diane make some clutch draws so far today, though. That is true. I'm not counting on any one of these ladies on the ice right now to miss. They are all playing extremely well. We just can't boot a rock. I want to boot another rock. No. No. But Lorraine still didn't hit that one as hard as Ben Hebert hit that rock at uh, the, the botchers in the briar there. So he hammered that thing. Oh, this is over curling, Sam. Uh oh. He narrowly avoid the jam. That was a near mistake. Didn't roll to the middle, so this shot is going to be a little easier than it could have been. Team Strifle would have really liked to occupy the center line there. Make Team Foster sweat a little bit more on this, this shot against what I believe is three. Yeah, it looks like she's it. just going to throw a soft weight hit here. Here it is, last shot, sixth end. The all-important sixth end as we've established. Shooting against three, Team Diane Foster. Looks like a nice controlled hit weight here. Yeah, sweepers like it, just cleaning it in for now. Not a lot of rotation on that thing, Sam. Yeah, this has got a curl. You're gonna see Lorraine, oh, there it goes. Is it gonna oh, curl that's... enough though? They don't wanna roll. It will roll, but they'll stick around. It is a single point for Team Foster. 5-4. You've got a game. It's Team Strifle with Hammer. Going into the seventh end. Who will be the Saskatchewan representative at the National Senior Tournament? We will find out soon enough here in Martinsville. I don't remember a time when curling wasn't a part of my life. When I wasn't putting in the sweat and hard work to be the best that I can be. Clocking in the time, the effort to practice day in, day out. Curling is more than just a game. It's a family, a community. And when it's time to play, I know I'll be ready. Hardline, supporting hundreds of our next generation athletes. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Here we go. Seventh end, one point game. 
Team Strife will whiff Hammer. Looking to pounce back in the lead. Two the guards in shot. front of the house here. That's a little bit of a miscue by Tracy Strifle's team coming up short there. They needed that to be in the rings. Now they're, they're giving Diane Foster's team two center guards to draw around. It's going to be extremely hard on them for the rest of the end. They're going to be chasing. You need some big shots to get out of this. Yeah, for sure. Not where you wanted to put that. Well, ladies and gents, if you wanted a center guard, you got three of them. <laughs> yeah, that also takes away the opportunity to uh, peel their own if they ever wanted to do that. So, locked in, both teams. You're drawn to the forefoot now, ladies. Whether you wanted to or not. First one in there is going to have the advantage. It's Team Strifle is the one that does have to push play here. You really don't want to be forced. Scoring multiple here is is going to be the you know unquestionable objective. Let's see how deep they get this. A little nibble of the eight foot. Not too bad. Oof, this is going to get messy. <laughs> this is like Friday night banquet federal bond spiel messy. Oh, oh. You mean Saturday? Saturday. Saturday's Whichever day is the banquet. <laughs> that federal open bond spiel has hosted some fantastic times for our uh, Regina curling crew. That's a love statement. Gotta love fun spieling season. Competitive curling's good, but it's all about the fun spiels. Sure. So <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my briar, Sam. Sweeping Beauties is my briar. I know. <laughs> so I left this one open. Strifle's going to be able to lie to here if they can execute this hit. This is tight. It is going to tick something. Kisses are red. Bumps a blue into the rings. That's a pretty big miss. Mm-hmm. Flashing on screen, Bobby Lee Tarasoff, real, realtor, another supporter of community events such as curling. We thank them. Please support those businesses that, that support curling this this community. Without sponsors, these teams would not be able to, to play the way they do, and these events just would not be able to attract the, the talent that they do. So thank you very much to, to any business that chooses curling as, as a uh, subject of their support. And curlers will support you. They're very loyal. That's That's completely true. I mentioned this in the game earlier, but it's, <laughs> with both my parents as, as curlers and, and us believing in this kind of community, everyone we did business with was was through curling. Doctor, dentist, <laughs> lawyers, financial advisor, guy who came and changed the the, the window seals, yeah, you know, everything, all the work around the house, all curlers.
This has got a curl. Oh, Danette Tracy is not very happy with her result on that one. She, you'd see their little body language is not too happy, but yeah, that's going to allow Diane Foster to make another draw around in here. Yeah, this is looking... Uh, if Team Strifle is going to score two, it's going to have to be right down the middle. They're going to need either a miss or, or the door to be left open. Yeah, if I was if I was Tracy, Diane makes this. We got to be playing up the playing some, getting rid of some rocks up the middle there. Expose those reds. Allow yourself to use them. Um, you know, it's it's really really hard at the end of the end when you keep trying to make, you know, try and you're chopping off a draw here, chopping off a draw there. It, it you, you got to open it up. At least get your one at this point, right? Yeah, and that's going to make it even more difficult. I, I like where Tracy's head's at here. It's, you know, you just got to get rocks in the forefoot at this point. It's not the way you, you started the end thinking you wanted th things to go, but here you are. There is an opening. Got to take it. Yeah, with that miss, it makes this call a lot more... What did I say? It makes it make a lot more sense. Um, if... If, the, if Don DeLee would have made that draw right around, I think we would have seen Tracy peel it all day. Sure. Oh, this is tight. This looks really close. Going to be on the top one, but can they get some separation? Uh, that's a really bad overlap. Not going to help. Not going to help at all. Starting to pile up here for Team Strifle. And this is how these ends ends progress and why the lead rocks in today's game are so important. You look, Tracy Strifle's team had a miss in the first rock at the end. It was a lead rock that came up short. They're supposed to go around a center guard. They actually left another center guard. And now this is what we're looking at. We're looking at Diane Foster putting a ton of pressure on Tracy Strifle's team. And it's because of one missed rock at the very start of the end. Yep, it's it's funny how they pile up like that. Really tone setting miss to come up light there to start the end. Let's take a peek at the time clocks if we can. Switch my camera here. Oh, both the teams doing fine for time. Eight minutes left for Team Strifle, seven minutes for Team Foster. Should be no issue whatsoever. Just lobbing one out there, taking away the intern path. Perfectly satisfied with what's going on. Once again, I think we got Tracy. We got to get rid of some stuff up the middle here. Yeah, I don't know if you have much of a choice of this, but I mean, I think you could get the side of the side of the forefoot if you draw in. But yeah, I still think we should have been peeling on the rock before that. Like, I I get it. The draw is great, but we didn't make the draw, and there's a chance you're not making the draw. At least when you peel, you're opening stuff up, regardless. Sure. I think the real backbreaker here was the this draw that came up light and ended up overlapping those two reds in the top of the 12. Well, that's the take... draw I was saying they should have peeled on. Ah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of the Hackner double there on the side for three, Sam? It's there. It's not easy. <laughs> no, it is not. You know, that is, that's thin. That's real thin. But it's there. But it's there. And I don't think you have any other way to get at that blue in the back of the rings. So it looks like they're going to try to get get shot rock in the forefoot. 
Pretty tough. Line's got to be perfect here. Isn't that how you make shots? Perfect line, perfect weight? Well, it depends. Well, we're through the hole, but we're a little yeah. heavy. Yeah, that's going to do nothing for him either. No, so that's, that's quite a few... Uh... Quite a few shots in a row now, Sam, that you're you're really putting all your marbles in, just just trying to, oh, if we could just make this one, if we could just make this one, but it, it's just too many shots in a row, you're getting zero results out of them. Like Yeah, that's the issue. We're not even getting, we're even getting a half shot out of these. It's it's a zero, and and that's, uh, Tracy Streifel is now going to have to make a big shot or two really big shots to get herself out of the sand. Yeah, really just to score one. Yeah. going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh Team Foster's kind of just in cruise control. They really don't. Their level of difficulty on their shots is so That's, low. Well, they're 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 keeping it simple. They're making the easy shots. Their their rocks are ending up in good positions. It's 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 very it's very well. I, I wouldn't say like because they're not playing perfect, but they're managing their results extremely well, and that is it's showing right now on this end. We got Diane Foster's last here, but I do have a comment on the YouTube channel from Garth Anderson saying, speaking of fun spiels, next weekend the annual pierogi spiel in Foam Lake, little money on the line as well. I am good friends with the Springer brothers who are from out there, and uh, I've heard all about that spiel. I heard it's a great time. The pierogi spiel. Yeah, the Springer boys do love their pierogi sweatshirts. I see them wearing them all the time at the Highland Curling Club. Yeah, that's, uh, and I'm sure they've eaten a fair amount of pierogies too with how, you know, again, that's another two brothers that ended up just tall and strong and I got shorted. I'm like five foot nine on a good day. <laughs> Didn't eat enough pierogies growing up. Apparently, oh, I, I don't know. My family's pretty uh, pretty into the pierogies, but <laughs> must have been the wrong ones, I guess. I don't know. Have you had the dessert pierogies with like the Saskatoon berry pie filling? No. Oh, those are divine. Absolutely divine. Put them in a deep fryer. Oh, nothing better. Dessert pierogies. Check them out. Yeah, Most putting, farmers that, markets will have them. putting that on the list for sure. We're on the third last rock of the seventh end of a provincial final, and you guys just got to hear about dessert pierogies. How lucky are you? <laughs> well, speaking of the shot, speaking of the curling they're playing, I actually think that... Uh, Team Foster gave Strifle an opportunity to get rid of this back blue. Like, I, I think before she shot, she had less than now. I actually think this is a terrible spot where they put this. She's close. You've got one. Oh, oh dead jam. Duff Sith. But so close. That was to lie three if she makes that. If I was Diane Foster, I would be hitting this red. I think that was a little bit careless by Team Foster, the way they, they uh, oh, well, we may as well just draw in. I think I, I think they weren't considering that they'd give something easier to Team Strifle. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it was funny, right before they threw that, I was talking about how well they've managed their results, and that was actually an example of a poorly managed result, um, just by not paying attention to where that's going to end up and what you're going to leave. You know, even if your rock is there, sometimes leaving your own rock can make it easier for the other team. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, one second you're talking about dessert pierogies, the next you, you've left your opponent a double. You know, Darth, I appreciate the comment, but I'm hungry now. <laughs> I'm going to drive to Foam Lake for some pierogies. All right, Foster's last stone. What are they trying to do here, Sam? Just sneak one in there? Or is this just a guard? I think she's just guarding. I wonder if we'll see some kind of run back for the two or three here. Well, if this overcurls, this, yeah, it, it has. This outside red is coming in. This is a run back for three or four. Okay, guard didn't really do much of anything. Team Foster's kind of just been stumbling around yeah. this, these last three or four stones. They, they don't really know what to do. They know they have shot rock. They know they're looking okay, but they really haven't been eliminating the... Uh, chance for Team Strifle to get a big end It here. is. The, this end is really turned around. Tracy Strifle now has, it's, it's about I'd say it's about a third third to a quarter rock 
angle run back. Like, this is not a gimme oh, God, by any super, means. Super tough. Um, but if she makes it, she dead jams on the blue on the side there. She could score four here. Yeah, it catches her shooter, hey? Yeah. Might go over top, but the important thing is to remove that blue stone in the back of the forefoot. She almost got it done on her first one. Just overcurled a little bit, and they stuffed it. But needless to say, this is a massive shot. And, you know, I did say I think Diane Foster's team should have hit this red. Instead of trying to guard this red rock, they should have hit this red rock that Tracy is now about to run into the rinks. Big swing on the line here. Tracy Strifle. With a run back for three or four here in the seventh end. It's for four. We're curling it. This is close. This is close, Sam. She's going to get the first. Contacts the blue. Oh! Oh! Doesn't quite push it far enough. I think it's just one. Either what? way, that was a, a shot. nice shot. Tracy Strifle. <laughs> That was incredible. That's really a big shot. And in an end that was really, really going poorly for Team Strifle. Uh, you know, Team Foster let off the gas. They kind of they kind of let them back in it. <laughs> We're tied up, coming home, playing eight. We are tied up, coming home. The thrilling conclusion to this senior women's final up next. Don't go anywhere. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. When we were first looking at these e-bikes, I read the reviews. What they talked about was an e-bike grin, and I had no idea what an e-bike grin was, but the first time I powered that bike up, I had the biggest smile on my face. It was unbelievable, because unless you own one or have driven one, you really have no idea of what that feeling is like. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to describe. Handcrafted in Canada, Hardline's Ice Pad has revolutionized curling for over a decade. Engineered with top-tier precision and durability, it is backed by an unmatched 10-year warranty. Designed for curlers at all levels to sweep effortlessly with maximum efficiency, it is trusted by the world's best curlers, including Olympic and world champions. It is quite simply the best brew in the game. Hardline, join the revolution. Here we are. It's the eighth end, tied up. Senior women's provincial final. Presented by Bike Tricks, the ultimate in electric bikes. What a game we've had, Sammy. This is this is incredible. You cannot ask for a better finish to a provincial final than right here. 5-5, five, five, tied up, coming home. Both teams, Diane Foster, Tracy Streifel, just making some absolute clutch shots every end, all game. And we got a guard in play. We got a wraparound. We we're gonna see fireworks here. This this game is this game is gonna end well. Yeah, let's have some fun. We've got uh, we've got our audience tuning in on YouTube, telling us where they're watching from in the chat. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, you know we got. What will likely be one end left. Maybe we'll go to extras. You never know. But I'm thinking that we're going to see this uh, this yeah. final conclude right here. This in the final end. And those that are commenting and in the comments in the chat with us, much appreciate it. You know, getting to hear from you guys out there makes it just as fun for us. Hopefully, it's fun for you. That's uh, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. All right, so we got we got a little pretty good setup here by Tracy Strive. We got a center guard and then uh, one around, just biting the top four there. Um, 
and Foster's following. Now this is part of that no tick rule, free guard zone rule, the five rock rule. Uh, you know, you is this setting up, putting more rocks in play every end. And it really, it really does give the teams that don't have hammer coming home a chance. Yeah, and we've seen it in the stats. We've seen it in, greatly affect the uh, percentages of teams that are able to pull off extra end steals and eighth end steals. I remember being a junior and you were tied up coming home with a hammer and you just made two appeals and you won the game. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Now it's a whole different ball game. Everybody playing to the four foot. Still in those first five rocks. Got my rock counters totally lined up, Sam. Thanks for checking. Yeah, I was really on the ball that one. Look at this freeze coming in here. Whew. Wow. Beauty tap. And But whose shot? I think it might still be blue. I think blue's shot, but the thing is, Strifle's team is shot ro or the top rock right now. So how do we get those reds out? Yeah, those, that's really good positioning for Team Strifle. Yeah, that was a, that was a great... Great shot by Denat Tracy right there. Angles are still looking okay for blue in the rings, but you, you're going to have to be the one that bangs things around if you're Team Foster. Yeah, she's electing to play the peel here. I love this call. This is a call. We need to get rid of the stuff out front. We need to make sure we score. That's, that's what you got to do when you have hammer. You need to make sure you have a chance to score. And when you leave stuff out front, leave stuff for the other team to use, your chances of scoring go down immensely. Ooh, didn't quite roll off. That's going to occupy a pretty valuable draw path. Absolutely, taking it up, does. Taking away an outturn, outturn draw path, not ideal. You would either want to move things around in the forefoot or completely remove your shooter. Getting the worst of both worlds there. Yeah, it does move it off the center line, though. Like, that's, you know, it's going to allow some access to the forefoot, and it's making Tracy draw, you know, or throw a guard again, which I think is probably probably the goal. Would Like, we want to roll it off farther, absolutely, um, but that's, you know, getting it off the center line, out of the forefoot line, that is big. Yeah, that's a good point, Sam. Just got a, a big influx of viewers. Just want to welcome you for anyone who's just tun tuning in. My name's Rory McCusker with Curling Stadium. I'm here with Sam Wills, and we are enjoying ourselves watching this fantastically played senior women's final. And look at that shot, Sam. Yeah, what a tap freeze here. You know, Diane's going to have to sit here and go, hey, we got to hit this, hit this blue hard and kind of on the nose, maybe a hair high. we got to get rid of these other two reds because they got to move that red rock off the button at some point if they want to win this game. Yeah, it is uh, It is definitely crunch time for Team Foster. They're looking at a troubling situation. It's going to take two shots at least to remedy this. So you got to start by making the first one. Bam, gets one blue. Not a terrific result. No, we needed to hit that on the other side of the rock if we wanted to get both those reds going. Now we got Tracy Strifle coming in. She's going to throw a guard. The angles for Tracy are impeccable right now, to be honest. Um, yeah. This is, this is, the team Foster has some work to do here. Yeah. I, I don't even know if, if this is the last rock of the game for, for team Foster. I don't even know how you score. Yeah. I don't know how you score things that got to change for team Foster. If they want to win this game. Team Strifle satisfied with how things look. They're going to lay up a guard. Let Team Foster do the hard work. This thing's skating, though. A little yeah, deep. this is moving. This is actually going to allow Diane Foster a bit of an opportunity to, to juggle some stuff around here, which she so desperately needs. So the call was a guard, right? Like, we're not crazy. I, it right? had to have been a guard. There's So that's probably the luckiest... Missed guard by 20 feet. 
I don't know. Seen. You hit, you hit, uh, you know, a third of a rock, half a rock on the outside of that blue into those two reds. That that middle red actually, because the action of it coming across the rings, will actually yeah. pull that red off the button. So so it kind of gave them a way to get that red off the button that they really didn't have before. Correct. Yeah, it's, I mean, you see Foster looking at running the red. I'm not sure that's the play. I'm not either, but we'll we'll see what the result is. Even if you you move stuff around, change the angles, it's still better than it was. This has got to make contact, though, and this is curling already. Are we gonna audible? Uh, let's see what happens. A uh, really bad result. Yeah, that's. Uh oh. Let them off the hook there, for sure. Frozen two that are shot on the button. It's going to take two rocks to, to get access to that. And Team Foster only has three rocks left. So now or never for Team Foster. <coughs> Just think of how desperate things were looking for Team Strifle mid-end in the seventh and how they've been able to turn it around. Tracy Strifle making that incredible angle you run know, for a single point. I was just thinking about that too, Rory. We, you know, all the momentum was going Diane Foster's way. They, you know, and Diane was maybe a little lazy with a couple shock calls coming down the stretch in yeah. that seventh end. And they still had Tracy in a tough situation. But Tracy comes out and makes a quarter rock angle run back to score her one. You know, that's, that's, and that's a momentum shift. You know, that's one of those things that, that can take the wind out of your sails as a team. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Diane Foster's team has still come out and they're... Um, well, we got something coming down the ice here. Um, okay, the action has been made. Oh, just a little unlucky with how little those two reds moved. If you could have ever gotten that red on the, the center line side and jiggled it around a little bit now, ah, geez, if, if he knows that, Sam, do, do you think both reds go still? Mm, yes. So you think as of right now, if Team Foster was throwing their last stone of the game, there, there would be a shot to score one? Yeah, you got to throw it really hard, though. Like you gotta throw that hard. Yeah, because it's it's curling the wrong way as well. Yeah. I don't think you could squeeze an out turn through there. So I think. No, you, it might it. actually be the red run back. It might be red into the two reds, spill them all. Just but you gotta your, yeah. that thing that rock's gonna be moving. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Things looking pretty scary for Team Foster. Dondali, she she almost got that where it needed to be. It just needed to curl, I'd say, an inch more. Not even. I think a half inch, and she only rolls. You know, she doesn't she doesn't roll the rock off, right? She hits it a half inch thicker. It stays right there. Dondali threw that pretty hard, um, yeah. and she had to. Um, but yeah, she threw it pretty hard. And and if if it would have stayed right on top, this this decision from. Tracy Strife would have been pretty quick. She's trying to guard for her life at that point. Yeah. Looks like they've they've settled on an out turn hit and roll. You're not really going to improve your scenario on the button too much. So where the shooter goes, you know, I actually think you're more likely to hurt yourself than help yourself with where you're going to put this shooter. Tracy's hitting. That's it. Looks like ice for a hit. Well. If you make the roll perfect, now let's say you make the roll perfect, dead frozen on top of those two reds, you know, Diane's going to have a heck of a time trying to score. 
But if she doesn't roll the way she wants to roll, she overrolls it a little bit. Yeah. You know, this or if she crosses the face, there's going to be there's going to be an out here for Diane. I exactly, and that's what I'd be afraid of. So here's the hit. So and there's that's... an overroll. Yeah, and so I mean, it may have rolled far enough Sam that like you can't get to it, but those are definitely going to create some angles where you're going to be able to get things off the button here. Yeah. I think I I think three rocks move, maybe even four if you drill this on the nose. Yeah. So that's what I was, I was a little afraid of. I didn't think you could help yourself really by rolling on top of the pile. Yeah, that's... Uh, if you roll dead frozen, like I said, it, it, it's really good. But, you know, we overrolled by half a rock. And now, all of a sudden, this doesn't, like... I mean, don't get me wrong. Diane still has to make a heck of a shot here. But, um, yeah, this is, this is an opportunity. Remember. It's, Strifle's had a really good setup in the forefoot for so long, they've kind of forgotten that they don't have a center guard. So once once things do move off of the button, if they ever do, you, you're you're kind of you're kind of dead. They're... Foster doesn't have a center guard to contend with. So if she can make these rocks move right here, it's going to be a huge swing. That's curling right away. Yeah, giving up on that. Okay, so if you take away that nose hit, Sam, I think that's basically handshakes. I, I don't see how you can get those reds off of the button without drilling that topmost red. The angle run back on the blue that was the peel earlier in the game will be the shot that she will have. I don't even know if that gets rid of them all, Sam. I, I, it does. You, you don't have to get them out. The thing, Rory, is if you stick it right there, you don't have to get them out of the rings. You just got to get them out of the forefoot. Right? I just, uh, yeah, I guess. I, just, I don't see that top red really. Ah, uh, maybe. It'll release. You got to throw it hard. Like I said, like you really got to throw it hard. And and that's, uh, that can be, that can be tough. But, um, you know, if we throw it hard enough, we'll be able to make it. It'll be Tracy Strifle taking away the easier shot which is a, a nose hit so they'll try to put something in the way of that this will be a line call a line shot i should say teams worked really hard this end to, to give her this advantage tracy's gonna try and cash it in by, by laying a guard right in front and this is looking pretty good sam yeah, this is, uh, she guarded the proper side of the rock. Diane is going to have a very tough shot here. It's going to be this angle run back on the blue. She's already going to look at it. Um, it's a shot. It's there. You know, it's, uh, how many games have you watched, uh, in big games where, you know, you just need one shot to win. And this is it. So Diane's going to line this up and throw it. And if she makes it, she's a provincial champion. But what an end by Tracy Strifle's team. Put the pressure yeah. on. You yeah, had three absolutely. rocks in the forefoot under, under cover. It's a very phenomenally curled end, and you got to give it to Tracy Strifle for making that run back in seven and getting the getting this game back on track for her team. Oh, absolutely. That, it changed everything. That was a uh, potential game-winning shot, Sam. But so is this. What a treat we've had today. Senior women's provincial final. It all comes down to this. Diane Foster with a difficult angle run back. Triple. Let's see what she can put on this stone. Yeah, she gave it a heave. They're curling it. Yeah, they need this to curl a mile. Well, it was a valiant effort, but it will be Tracy Strifle and her foursome. Taking the victory here with a magnificently played eighth and final end. Get to see some great sportsmanship here. Yeah, what, uh, wow, what an event. Um, this is a fantastic day of watching curling. You know, props to Diane Foster and her team. They played so well today. And, you know, Tracy Strifle and her team, they, uh, 
they grinded hard, and they Tracy made an unbelievable shot in seven. The team played so well in eight. Uh, it's it's you know, senior curling in Saskatchewan is very much so incredible to watch. And you watch these ladies as they celebrate. You know, this is a tough event to get through. Um, you know, you got Deanna Doig's team with Nancy Inglis, and you got Sherry Anderson's team, Curling Canada Hall of Famers. You got Diane Foster, a world champion. And you got Tracy Strifle here, who has also won this event before. But these these girls, they are, you know, that's they got to go through a gauntlet here to win this event. And it's just fantastic to see uh, to see how great the curling is and, and look how excited they are. It's a long Dog. week. That's well said, Sam. Yeah, a lot of respect, a lot of pride in our province as you watch this uh, this competition. This is uh, this is the hotbed of curling, and and the world knows it. Some emotion from these ladies. That's great. Steve Turner, the exe or president, executive director of Curl Sask. I shouldn't say president. That's someone else um, out there now. But yeah, that's uh, wow. What a great uh, what a great day. Well, I think we'll stick around for a little bit, watch them uh, don their jackets. But wow, what a, what a fantastic game! Yeah, I Friends. wish we could. Uh, can you put video replay at Tracy shot in seven? Like, wow, that was. Yeah, anyone watching this game, you might want to go back and check that shot out if you missed it. Angle, angle rip in seven to score one. She almost scored two there as well. She hits it any thinner. Yeah. It might be three or four. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like that was that was a fantastic, uh, fantastic game. Yeah, we got friends and family out on the ice now. Martinsville, not too far away from Saskatoon. Let's see if we can spy anyone in the crowd here, Sam. Who do we got? Glare is pretty bad, can't see much. Oh, are they waving to us? Somebody waved to us. <laughs> oh, I think that was Savannah waving to us down in the corner there. Who are the officials this weekend? Is that uh, looks like Bob Sonder and you got a big big thanks to the volunteers out there, guys. Like I said again, those guys, those officials, they uh, they're not getting paid, and they put up with our our crap every week, every event, every and uh, without them, these these events don't happen. So big big thanks, and the Martinsville Curling Club too. Uh, James Absolutely. Gordon making great ice. Finding money to support uh, produced streams. It's it's uh, you know the sponsors, the the whole community. Let's get that final score in there. I think it was uh, three points for Strifle. And here they go, taking the sheet. Ah, this is one of the best traditions in sports. This is the getting piped down. I just got a message from uh, Tracy's daughter, Kristen, who's uh, also an incredibly good curler. Um, she goes, I was too nervous to say a word earlier, but we are so proud of mom. She deserves this more than anything, especially after losing a tough Masters final. Watching is so much harder than playing. I agree with you, Kristen. It's you should be proud of your mom. She played fantastic today. This is uh, this is a great moment for these gals. <laughs> they're ju they're juking me out on the camera here. <laughs> where, where are you going, ladies? <laughs> ah. 
Oh, that's a great message from uh, Kristen, who was also a stats volunteer at that slam in Saskatoon. She didn't beat herself up nearly as much as Mum, though. Ladies and gentlemen, no. your Senior Girl. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that's some great emotion there. Oh, <laughs> this is these these ends of these events are they're pretty wholesome because they're so excited they don't even know where to go, and it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool to see. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time for the magic. And there it is, a trophy. And I'm sure they'll do us proud at the national competition next year. Next yes, season, I'm, I should say. I'm trying to find where the nationals will be held, but I cannot find it, so I don't think it's been announced yet. Time to change the color of those jackets, ladies. There is uh, no better feeling than putting on that green jacket. Oh, wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rory. As, hey, as, as Joan says, it's not too late for Rochelle. No, it really isn't. Me? Eh, maybe. <laughs> Your 2024 Sask Senior Women's Champions, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, well deserved. An extra end victory this morning in the semis. And a really hard fought. Uh, you know, that seventh end, Sam, I'm going to be thinking about that one for a while. They, they looked dead to rights. They were uh, choked off from the entire scoring area. And, you know, one opportunity was given to Tracy Streifel to, to make that shot. Tied the game up, and then, like you said, the front end for Team Streifel really locked away the forefoot and, and gave some amazing angles for the back end of, of Team Strifle to work with. And by the time it was all said and done, you said it in the earlier game, Sam, it's as a skip, getting in the hack to throw a guard. It's a pretty good feeling. It means your team did a lot in front of you. Absolutely. Well, this feels like a pretty good image to sign off with. Thank you so much for... Uh, for joining us on this this journey, this senior women's provincial journey. Thank you for to Curl Sass for trusting Curling Stadium with broadcasting uh, these games. It's been a fantastic partnership this year, and and all of us at Curling Stadium really hope that we can work together more in the future on on even bigger and better events with Curl Sass. So, thank you everyone for tuning in, Sam. I hope you had fun commentating today. I, I really enjoyed having you, and I I think uh, you brought a lot to the the broadcast. So thank you very much for volunteering your time. This was uh, this was a great uh, great day for it. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yeah, we'll we'll and, keep this. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Sam. I was going to say, and uh, for those of you that uh, tuned in today and haven't watched any events on the Curling Stadium, I tune in all the time when I'm not on here, and I just watch, and it's great. You can see curling everywhere. So it's been an awesome year for sure. Well, we'll keep the video rolling, guys, and uh, but that'll be it for me and Sam. We'll sign off. Congratulations to Team Strifle and, and all the competitors here at the Senior Women's Provincials. Have a lovely St. Patrick's Sunday, everybody. Peace.